This is now 9 a.m. sharp, Paris and Brussels time. So I'm going to, to, to offer some word of introduction, the time that the people uh, connect to, to the session. Uh, but uh, good morning for those in, uh, in uh, Europe. Good afternoon for those in, uh, in Asia. Uh, I'm Céline Pajon. I'm a senior fellow with the Japan program at uh, VUB, and I'm uh, very happy to, to have you, to welcome you to our second session of our public lecture series uh, that took that of Japan as a regional uh, security uh, actors and uh, the strategic challenges in the Indo-Pacific. So this is part of the Japan program at the Ridge University of Brussels. Uh, two weeks ago, my colleague Eva Peshova hosted uh, Gordon Flake uh, for a discussion on the evolving uh, security landscape in the Indo-Pacific and uh, especially the, the role of uh, alliances. And today we will zoom in on uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, we will look at the ASEAN history uh, and current strategic challenges, uh, and also discuss the relations between uh, Japan and ASEAN. I think we can easily say that Southeast Asia has been and continues to be a central focus uh, of uh, Japan's diplomacy uh, in terms of economic cooperation, uh, investment, as well as more uh, political and strategic engagement. Mm -hmm. And so this lecture will explain why uh, there is this special interest from Japan uh, on Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. It will also look at mm -hmm. the challenges uh, raised by the Chinese growing engagement in the region. Uh, both for ASEAN and, and for Japan. Mm -hmm. And so today I'm really uh, delighted to have a super speaker with us uh, to help uh, better grasp the various dimensions of these key uh, relations. Uh, so I'm introducing now Mie Oba. She's a professor at the Faculty of Flow of Kanagawa University. Uh, she specialized in international relations with a focus on regionalism and regional integration in Asia. And so by doing that, she has been working on ASEAN uh, and also ASEAN relations with Japan for years now. She received a PhD in international relations from the University of Tokyo. And she has served as a professor of the Tokyo University of Science. She has been also a visiting fellow at the Institute of Defense and Strategic Studies of the Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. And she has been an academic, asso academic associate uh, in the program on a US-Japan relation of Harvard University. Uh, of course, Mie wrote many articles and several books uh, on the subject, and she is really a leading scholar in Japan on all things ASEAN. So I'm really, really happy to have her today with us. Uh, Mie will uh, speak for about uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. She will make a presentation, and then we will open the discussion. And uh, of course, I already have my, my own questions uh, in mind. I have many, uh, but I will encourage uh, the, the audience to think about their, their own question and to write them down in the Q&A uh, box mm -hmm. of, uh, of mm -hmm. your Zoom uh, mm -hmm. window. Uh, so I, I've been quite long already, and I see that Mia is eager to start uh, all yeah, yeah, yeah. presentations. So, <laughs> so very happy to, uh, to 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 give you the floor, Mia. Very happy to have you today. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, so I share my slide, and then to start. Well, mm -hmm. uh, okay. So yeah, so uh, thank you for the introduction. So my, uh, the, by the uh, uh, Celine, and then so I really uh, show the appreciation for the Brussels School of Governance and the Japan program. So I'm so happy to uh, have opportunity to give the presentation to you, and uh, very thanks to join uh, this seminar from the um, from the morning. And then so today, so my my lecture title is the ASEAN strategic challenges and the role of Japan in the in the Pacific geopolitical arena. So, and then, so, well, sorry, okay. 
So today's lecture, so has a three pillars. The first one is uh, uh, what is ASEAN and what has ASEAN achieved? Um, I'm afraid you know much about this, but uh, um, I want to show the, the, uh, the some basic uh, knowledge about the ASEAN and ASEAN achievement. So the second one is how has been Japan ASEAN partnership developing? developing? Uh, and then, so this is the historical background so of the ASEAN-Japan relationship. And the third one is uh, uh, the very current issues. What are the current challenges for Japan-ASEAN partnership? So, and how to develop the partnership in the current situation between ASEAN and Japan? And what is the problem to promote it? So I pointed out, I will point point out later. So there are the very serious uh, perception gap between the ASEAN and Japan from my point of view. So I would like to show this point later. And then, well, what is the ASEAN? So this is the basic knowledge about this. So the ASEAN, so formal name is Association of the Southeast Asian Nations and it was established in the August 1967, uh, uh, so at the mid of the Vietnam War. And then uh, it's now, the ASEAN is composed of the 10 member countries. So among them, the founding members are the Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. So, and so after that, uh, ASEAN enlarged, so its members, and then the so Brunei joined in the 1940, uh, 1984, and the Vietnam uh, joined in the 1995 after the end of the Cold War, and Laos and Myanmar joined in the 1997, and the Cambodia uh, joined in the 1999. So, uh, in the Southeast geographical field, uh, the spheres of the Southeast Asia, Timor Leste, Leste does not join the ASEAN yet. So, and then, but uh, uh, it has an observer status. Yes, uh, maybe, so uh, some, of the, some, some of you, some of you know much about the diversity in the Southeast Asia. And then, so I show uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, 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 in this uh, slide, so only, the diversity, so in terms of the, uh, the political regimes and the uh, population size and their uh, uh, GDP size or the GDP per capita and the currency, uh, uh, currencies. So, but, so in addition to that, so uh, Southeast Asia, Asia contains the diversity of the ethnic, ethnical, and the religious and the historical background. So there are many diverse areas. So, but beyond such a um, diversity, so uh, ASEAN was established and continued to be for about, about know, over the 50 years, 50 years. So what does uh, ASEAN aim for? So the main objectives, so to promote cooperation to keep and foster peace and the prosperity in the Southeast Asia and broader region like the East Asia and the Asia Pacific or now in the Pacific. And so to, and for this main objective, they tried to promote the internal cooperation among members. So in the area of the political security, economy, and the social cultural field. So, and then, so, uh, the, so maybe you know, the ASEAN community was established, or already established in the, the two, 20, uh, 20, 2015. And the ASEAN community is composed of the three pillars. The first one is the ASEAN political security community. The, and the uh, ASEAN economic community and the uh, ASEAN social cultural community. There's such an internal so cooperation and integration efforts. 
So the ASEAN tried to foster the tie with the key countries outside the region. So it's, uh, it's led to the construction of the ASEAN-centered regional architecture. So I would like to show you this one. Yes, so, sorry. Yes, this diagram shows the ASEAN-centered regional architecture, so which are composed of the regional institutions in the East Asia and uh, Asia Pacific. The ASEAN country constructed them with it, itself as an uh, institutional core and evolving the major external, uh, external countries. For example, so ASEAN is here. The ASEAN pre, uh, plus three was established in the 1997, including Japan, China, Korea. And so EAS, it was established in the, in, in the 2005. So now its member is of course ASEAN and the other uh, great powers. So like uh, China, uh, uh, US and Russia, Australia, New Zealand, and, uh, and India and Japan, China, Korea, like that. So this is, these these uh, 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 institutions, all of them are institutionally ASEAN centered. It means that uh, always ASEAN one of the ASEAN countries manage the uh, conference and many efforts. So uh, 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 the year as a uh, uh, Chia country, and then so uh, and then so the agenda setting and the management of the conference and the argument are very uh, 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 influenced by the intention of the ASEAN 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 countries, and well, so I back to this. Yes. The ASEAN-centered regional architecture is composed of the, such uh, various regional institutions. So uh, I show uh, before now. And so ASEAN-centered regional architecture is, has uh, another portion. So it, it's uh, ASEAN plus one solidations or the institutionalization of the ASEAN plus one uh, uh, relationship. ASEAN plus China and ASEAN plus Japan and ASEAN plus US and ASEAN plus Australia and blah, blah, blah. And then so now uh, ASEAN tried to institutionalize such a uh, tied with the outer countries. So with the dialogue partner system or, or the uh, FTA or the other uh, many, uh, 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 many uh, uh, institutional uh, measures. Well, well, so I would like to, um, sorry, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'd like to uh, change the subject to the historical development of the ASEAN-Japan relations. The first, the relationship between Japan and Southeast Asia in the modern era can be traced back to the end of the 19th century. So when the Japanese made the so economic inroad into the Southeast Asia, this led to Japanese immigration and, uh, and the formation of the Japanese towns throughout the region. But more than those private sector movement, it was Japan's invasion of the Southeast Asia during World War II, that so-called Southern Expansion, that defined Japan's post-war relationship with Southeast Asia. And you all know, you all know the Japan lost, lost the war. Sorry. Japan lost the war, so, and once the, the war was over, almost all Japanese withdrew from the Southeast Asia. After Japan regained its independence, 
through the San Francisco Peace Treaty. <coughs> uh, the Peace Treaty in the signed in the 1951. So Japan have to negotiate the establishment or the diploma diplomatic relations with the newly developed, uh, developed and uh, independent countries in the Southeast Asia and with them negotiate the reparations. So Japan made numerous reparations to the Southeast Asian countries. However, these reparations led to the Japan's economic assistance to Southeast Asia, which later became the Official Developmental Assistance, ODA. In addition, the reparations also triggered the economic re-entry of the Japanese companies and firms into the Southeast Asia. Well, so how did such a Japan re, uh, react to the establishment of the ASEAN? So in the 1967, to be honest, the reaction was, was not positive. Uh, from Japanese point of view, it seemed to be a more uh, the mere uh, the coalition of the small and the poor countries. And it seemed to be very fragile. And then so, uh, a leftist intellectuals in Japan criticized the ASEAN. So because they regarded it as anti-communist alliance manipulated by American imperialism promoting Vietnam War or as an invasion toward Vietnam. So, but Japan had to construct so the relation with the ASEAN after that. The direct impetus. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, direct in, um, yes, okay. I'm sorry to, to manipulate you, so. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. So, yes. So the, the direct impetus for this was the outbreak or the synthetic grave uh, lover issue between the ASEAN countries, particularly Malaysia and Japan. At that time, Japan was expanding to its synthetic labor uh, labor export to the rest of the world. The, this provided the very negative impact on the Malaysian's natural rubber production and export. So Malaysian government asked Japanese government to take action to address this, but it and, the, and, and, and this and uh, this was not taken seriously by Japanese government. And then so Malaysian government uh, involved the ASEAN and negotiated with Japan ASEAN and other ASEAN countries supported this. So in 1973, dialogue between Japan and ASEAN was initiated. That was the start of the ASEAN-Japan relations. It was not a very happy start, was it? Well, sorry. sorry. Well, in addition to economic conflict, so the Japan has a very serious, uh, very serious pro uh, problem with the Southeast Asia. So and and antipathy towards Japan was growing in the Southeast Asian countries. The increased presence of the Japanese company and the firms in the region propagated the image of Japan as an economic animal and also evoked the return of Japanese imperialism. The citizens also began to criticize Japan's o an ODA, Official uh, Development Assistance, to Southeast Asia, so for supporting the authoritarian regimes, so in the regions, in the region at that time. 
the such antipathy so toward Japan exploded in the form of the intensified anti-Japanese movement and the protests. So when Prime Minister so Kakue Tanaka visited so uh, Southeast Asia in the January 1974, I'm sorry, oh, 1974, four. Well, in response to this situation, Japan was forced to uh, list, uh, restrictive or list structure, uh, so its policy towards Southeast Asia. This is why the Fukuda Doctrine was issued. Fukuda Doctrine was the, uh, the policy towards Southeast Asia that Prime Minister Takeo Fukuda showed in the speech during his visit to Manila. Philippines in the September 1977, and it con uh, consisted of the three pillars, and in it, the strengthening of the relations with uh, the ASEAN was once again placed as a center of the Japan policy toward Southeast Asia. This was positively received by uh, ASEAN countries. This is often regarded as a starting point so for the ASEAN-Japan relations because uh, uh, Japan are happy here. And then, well, but seen subsequently, so especially in the 1980s and the 1990s, Japan really enjoys a tremendous advantage over the uh, over the other countries in its relations with Southeast Asia and the ASEAN. So the Japan is uh, one of the dialogue partner. Uh, there are uh, uh, some other dialogue partner like US and Canada and Australia and New Zealand and the European Economic Community. So in the 1980s. So but uh, Japan was. Uh, Japan was the largest trading trading trade partner of the ASEAN country, so in the 1980s and 1990s, and Japan Japan as the top donor of the ODA to the Southeast Asia, and then so the in the 1990s and uh, in the in the 1990s Japan began to uh, 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 promote the industrial cooperation to the, the ASEAN countries or the ASEAN and set the new framework for, for it. So ATM, and I'm sorry, AEM meeting. So ASEAN economic minister and the ministry of the uh, trade and the industry, so meeting. So it's a, a kind of the economic minister meeting between the ASEAN and Japan. And so after the uh, Asian financial crisis, so some of the Southeast Asian country was so heavy, heavily damaged. And then so Japan proposed the Asia Monetary Fund in the 1997. And uh, this uh, idea failed because of the very strong opposition by the United States and the uh, reluctant attitude of China. So, but instead of that, so Japan proposed and provide the uh, uh, proposed the, the new Miyaza plan. So in the 1998 and 1999, which uh, provided the huge uh, financial assistance to the uh, Southeast Asian countries. So this Miyaza plan was a, uh, was a template become became the template of the Chen Mai Initiative, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, specific financial cooperation in the East Asia. So, of course, the Chen Mai Initiative was established by the and uh, Japan's leadership. But, however, from the early 2000s, uh, the, the situations uh, is what uh, had, uh, had been changing around Japan and in the East Asia. So from the early 2000s, Japanese policy making circle related to the Asian policy. So began to be obsessed by the competition with the rising China. So because 
China's expanding presence in East Asia become visible, be, uh, uh, began, began to be visible at the time in the 2000s. The China began to promote the good neighbor policies toward Southeast Asia as well as Central Asia at the time and especially began to try to strengthen its relationship with China, with uh, an ASEAN. So through the 2000s, Japan and China competed for strengthening tie with China. And Japan had to add the new, uh, add the new element in policy toward ASEAN and Southeast Asia and East Asia because of the development of the ASEAN country and China, Chinese economies. So it means that official uh, development assistance, it used to be the very powerful uh, diplomatic tool toward the Asian countries. Otherwise, uh, it ends, and uh, ODA was still so important diplomatic tool for Japan, but so its effectiveness began to be decreasing. So, so in addition to the ODA, so Japan began to have to show its initiative to regional integration and encouraging ASEAN centrality so with a tightening tie with the ASEAN. So for example, so the, uh, the Japan tried to promote ASEAN plus one FTA after uh, it means that the Japan uh, ASEAN FTA and the bilateral FTA with uh, each ASEAN countries. And so Japan pushed the idea of the East Asian community. So uh, East Asian community idea was a hot issue in the East Asia in the 2000s. And then so Japan showed that, that this very uh, proactive attitude to contribute to the realization of the community. And so as a, as a more specific uh, idea, Japan proposed to promote regional economic integration with a mega FTA, like a comprehensive economic partnership for the East Asia and CETA. And so the Japan tried to further encourage the ASEAN centrality and try to do tight and foster the relationships with between the you know, relationship uh, between the Japan and ASEAN by various measures. So um, I skip them. So next, please. Yes. And then, so uh, in the 2010s, the regional circumstances were further changing and Japan had to adjust them. The rise of China became more obvious and visible and, and visible. And it caused the change of the balance of power between the US and China. And the US the, the decline was also beginning to be obvious, at least uh, relatively at the time. So, and then, uh, the China began to sorry, China began to conduct the proactive foreign policies. The first, China proposed a new idea or the visions for the regional international order, like ASEAN Infrastructure Investment Bank (AIIB) and the Belt and Road Initiative uh, (BRI). Uh, in addition, China demonstrated. Uh, a very uh, assertive stance on the territorial issue. So in the both East China Sea, sea and as well as the South China Sea. So you know, so China's claims, a territorial claim in the South China Sea uh, became a very sharp uh, confrontation between the China and the Vietnam and the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan and and also in the East China Sea. So over the Senkaku Island, Japan and China confront so their claims. So, and the most essential and intrinsic so change for Japan was the decline of Japan's economic position in Asia Pacific 
so causing the decline of the if political um i'm sorry yeah uh, it's a political it's political influence uh please see the graph so in the left side okay so it shows the trend of the each country's share of the trade uh, the trade in the trade of the, all the ASEAN countries. Japan's share is shown is in orange, orange here. So, and then China dark is dark green here, very, uh, very uh, small. And the China, uh, um, uh, and the uh, United States is pink. And the intra-ASEAN trade is uh, light green here. So it's the 1980, I'm sorry, it's too small, but 1980 and 1990, 12 and 2000, uh, 2000 and 2010 and 2017. So it's very clearly shows the shrinking of the Japan's share. So in the old the ASEAN trade. So and so reversely, the China's share is very uh, is expanding here. It's it's here, and also the intra trade and intra ASEAN trade also increasing, and so the U.S. Uh, as well as Japan uh, is decreasing. This is a trend. So in the uh, the the you uh, the trade uh, the ASEAN trade. So and uh, please uh, look at the right side so uh the five i show the five pie chart so these show the share of the each country to, uh, gdp in the total gdp of the country in the asia pacific region as of the 1980 and the 1990 and the 912 and to, uh, to, 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 to uh, 2010 and the 2012 so and then so you 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 can see that so in this chart yes of course the uh, united states and we have here the 1980 that is very big so and then so the uh, japan is a gray one uh so big and the 1990 is also and uh, two, uh, 2000 so also so japan's share is so big but uh the 2010 the situation drastically changes. So the 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 amount a share of the China and the that of the Japan are almost same here. And then so 2012, uh, the China surpass uh, clearly surpass the share of the uh, Japan's uh, share of the GDP in the uh, Asia Pacific. And of course, uh, the, the US is uh, still the largest share of the GDP, but so the share is shrinking. Well, mm. yes, okay. Right. So then the, it, it's a trend of the bilateral ODA performance allocation by the region. So in Japan, so bilateral ODA, so Asia is a still largest recipient. So Southeast Asia is a part of Asia. So Asia mean uh, includes not only Southeast Asia, uh, but also the uh, South Asia, or the, uh, of course, the, uh, the North, Northeast Asia and Central Asia. So, but anyway, so the Asia is still the largest recipient. So, but uh, its portion is declining. And Japan still provides a large amount of ODA towards Southeast Asia, but its portion so, and, and, uh, is declining in the, all of the ODA towards Asia. So I, I'm sorry, so I, can, I, I cannot uh, find this uh, the, uh, fact. So in the chat today, but uh, a portion is Southeast Asia is shrinking. So in the all of the ODA toward Asia, and the ODA to some Southeast Asian countries is declining compared with the ten years ago. So and then so for example, the Indonesia, uh, the ODA toward the Indonesia, Vietnam, and Malaysia is uh, decreasing, and uh, and. 
So Japan, so uh, uh, did did not uh, that does not provide the the Singapore and the Brunei anymore because so their their uh, their economic level is so high so they do not do not need and cannot accept the any ODA. So then the what I want to say that so ODA which used to be the most important diplomatic tool toward the Asian country is decreasing its effectiveness. I pointed out the same uh, fact uh, uh, about uh, uh, in the, the 2000, but the situation is more uh, uh, more severe and become more severe for the ODA's effectiveness in the 2010. Well, the and then so the against this background, the Japan's ASEAN corporations so the emphasis point was was shifted, so in the 2010s. So in addition to the OEA, Japan has to foster other measures to keep and foster the partnership with the ASEAN and ASEAN countries. So Japan looked look a uh, leading role to promote the uh, RCEP negotiation. It's a, it's a mega FTA. So RCEP aim to foster the uh, economic uh, East Asian economic integration. And so uh, the importance of the security defense aspect of the Japan ASEAN partnership began to be emphasized. So in the Japan's foreign policy. So for example, so Japanese government so uh, 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 announced makes and uh, made and announced the, the national security strategy in the end of the 2013 the in this strategy so in this strategy the republic korea uh, australia and asean so asean countries and indonesia so are the shared universal value and strategic interest so with Japan so that this uh, strategy say that and so the, the this tra uh, strategy said so Japan should strengthen the cooperative relationship with them so uh, it uh, very clearly shows that uh, Japan so began to uh, regard the ASEAN as uh, not only the economic partner or the economic something, but also and, and the mere uh, friendly uh, partner, but also the uh, strategic partner. So in the 90, uh, in the 2010, and so Japan uh, began to actually promote the defense cooperation with ASEAN. So the one of the big uh, 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 sign is a proposal of the Vientiane region in the 2016. So at the second uh, Japan defense, Japan ASEAN defense minister meeting. So uh, that and this Vientiane region clearly shows uh, the Japan's uh, defense cooperation toward toward the Southeast Asia. And then so this uh, Vientiane region was replaced was replaced by the Vientiane Vision 2.0, so in the 2019. And so Japan so positioned the ASEAN-Japan partnership within the context of the diplomacy of the free and open in the Pacific FOIP. Maybe you know the, 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 the yes. I, I want to check the, my, my time. I'm sorry. Well, so you, maybe you know that Japan's uh, free and open in the Pacific, and then so I skipped it. And the, so now, so the Japanese government tried to, to promote Japan ASEAN cooperation, various Japan, uh, various cooperation or schemes. So of the Japan ASEAN cooperation under the banner of the FOIP. So, uh, for example, the quality infrastructure and enhance the capacity building on the fiscal policy and debt management, 
or the, uh, ensure the maritime stability. So it means that providing equipment and human resources development for the maritime law enforcement in the Southeast Asia. So it includes, so Japan provide, and it includes provision of the, the total of the 2027 uh, patrol vessels, the 13 high speed boats, and 11 coast and coastal monitoring radar equipment to the uh, coastal country in the Southeast Asia, like Vietnam and the Philippines. And, and, uh, uh, and Japan tried to strengthen the, the cooperation for the capacity building in terms of this issue. And so Japan now very uh, uh, focus on the such a defense and security uh, cooperation with the ASEAN, in addition to the economic cooperation like the quality infrastructure. And so Japan and Japan ASEAN cooperation, so uh, was forced and, and has been fostered under the COVID-19 pandemic. So the, of course, so ASEAN countries, so was very severely damaged by the COVID-19 pandemic. And then so Japan uh, provide the many uh, assistance or support to the Southeast Asia. So it was it can be categorized into two, two, two parts. The first one is a medical cooperation, and the second one is the support to the revitalized economy. Well, so and then so, but the but uh, yeah. So we what do I told told now? is about the Japan viewpoint. So the Vientiane vision and the uh, IP or the blah, 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 all of them as a, a Japan viewpoint. So I turn to the perspectives of the ASEAN side. The, they are basic external policy. It to keep the balance, to keep ASEAN countries strategic autonomy. So, they are trying to strengthen its own resilience, so unity and uh, centrality. From this point of view, their own organization, the ASEAN, is so important for them now, and they tried to avoid taking side one side between China and the US, individually and China as a whole. In addition, so their uh, perspectives on the light of China is a mixture of the concern and the expectation. Of course, they do not like over dependence on the China, China, China money, do not like to see the China dominated the regional order. So, and embarrassed uh, by the China's assertive attitude about the South China Sea issue. So on the other hand, China is the most important economic partner and expects Chinese investment and aid. So uh, a, a part of them through the uh, BRI. In this context, the ASEAN country have some concern about Japan's FOIP because Japan is a US ally. Even if Japanese government says so Japan's FOIP is not the exclusive one, not the same as the US FOIP, uh, which is a very anti-Chinese feeling and uh, the Chinese characteristics. So but many ASEAN elites have a concern that Japan's FOIP intend to check China as well as US FOIP does. One of the, uh, the ASEAN reaction to is, to make and announce the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific AWIP in 19, uh, 2019. Uh, the AWIP emphasized the inclusiveness. So it, it actually means that Indo-Pacific cooperation should include not only US, Japan, India, but also China, and Russia, 
all of the regional powers. And it also demonstrated the Indo-Pacific based on the ASEAN centrality, not led by the non-ASEAN great powers like US and Japan. The, from this point of view, the East Asian Summit is the most important institution in the ASEAN architecture from the an ASEAN point of view. At the same time, the ASEAN tried to uh, tighten cooperation with a third party to keep balance between the US and China. From this point of view, Japan, Japan is very important. The expectation for the Japan the FOIP as the resources for their economic development and the Japan the defense cooperation and the aid to the ASEAN country are also welcoming. So at least some of the ASEAN countries, so especially the Philippines and Vietnam. And of course, so the European country and the EU are, are becomes a very important partner for the ASEAN and ASEAN countries. They are basically welcoming the Indo-Pacific uh, strategy by the uh, by uh, welcoming the various Indo-Pacific strategies. So by the uh, European countries. So so the Indonesia and the Malaysia government showed their concern about the AUKUS. So uh, uh, announced in the last um, uh, sept last September. So, but they show that, so it accelerated the strategic competition and arm race in this region. The Indonesia, the Malaysian government said that at the time, but on the other hand, according to the survey of the Institute of the Southeast Asian Studies in Singapore, 36% of the ASEAN countries, political and economic elites feel that the AUKUS arrangement will help balance China's growing military power in the, in the region. And Russia is also one of the important third part, part, important, one of the important third party for the ASEAN, or the, at least some of the ASEAN, and at least used to be. The, some of the ASEAN country has been tightening economic business relationship so after the mid order 2010, uh, Vietnam, Laos, and Indonesia. But now this option disappears with uh, uh, the Russian invasion to uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. The, the, you know, so Vietnam and Laos are especially troubled. So they obtain on the Russian, uh, Russian revolution and uh, uh, the resolution to condemn the Russia in the UN special session of the General Assembly. So it's it show their uh, troubleness, trouble and uh, their trouble. Well, um, in a word, uh, uh, in short, there is a very big gap between the Japan and ASEAN. And the strategic competition in the Indo-Pacific intensified and uh, the regional order shift, Japan and ASEAN and on the same position. So not so it means that not easily take only one side between the US and China. Of course, Japan is a US ally, but China is a very huge and important neighbor country. And then so uh, the very tough um, question for Japan is how to address the such a very complicated situation. So Japan have to keep the stable relationship with China, but so Japan, so uh, the, the try to, to keep the very good relation uh, ally, alliance so with the, the United States. So the uh, U, US China library is escalating now and uh, how to deal, how to address such a very uh, tight, uh, the serious uh, situation. But anyway, so for Japan, even though the U, uh, uh, Japan is a US ally, US ally, so Japan cannot cut off the relationship with China. 
So to uh, they have to keep the 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 stable relationship with the China, and the ASEAN and ASEAN country has the same uh, the the same uh, 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 program. So and then so in this sense, so Japan and China and, and Japan and ASEAN as on the same position. So for both ASEAN and, ASEAN and Japan and to encourage the strategic autonomy of the ASEAN and ASEAN country is very crucial. But however, there seem to be the serious gap so between them. So Japan's intention. So Japan and uh, uh, the ASEAN and ASEAN country have been so important to themselves, but in the current strategic circumstances in the East Asia and in the Pacific, how to address the expansion of the China's influence is the Japan's top priority or the Japanese government top priority. In this context, Japan tried to further tighten the tie with the ASEAN as a partner. The, but the ASEAN, the ASEAN ambivalence is very important. So ASEAN country tried to keep the balance and not to take one side in the great power rivalry. So they can't totally support and accept the current approach of the Japan, the ally with the US, with the Hoip. So the prospect of the Japan's role. So 2023, the, this year is uh, uh, the 15th anniversary year of the Japan ASEAN partnership. And so Japan's role to more, uh, I, I think it's my opinion, Japan's role should be, uh, should, should, should be uh, contribute to the more fair and inclusive order in the Indo-Pacific. And so to this end, so Japan have to promote and enhance the Japan ASEAN or Japan ASEAN countries cooperation and partnership. At the same time, Japan need to cooperate so with ASEAN on the face-to-face -face basis. In other words, no matter what the US-China relationship is, so Japan should promote steady cooperation with ASEAN and ASEAN countries based on its recognition of their individual and complex situations. If Japan view ASEAN as a partner to deter China, it will lose uh, the sight of the ambiguous and the complex feeling Japan had towards the great power rivalry and the perception gap between the ASEAN side and the Japan side. And then so Japan should uh, promote the steady cooperation in the uh, several uh, fields. So like uh, encourage and improve the RCEP and collaborate on the clean energy and VX and uh, to promote capacity building in terms of the maritime security to keep and to keep peace and stability in the, in the Pacific and disaster relief and humanitarian assistance. Well, so my uh, lecture is ended. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, dear, dear Mie. That was a fascinating, um, really a fascinating lecture. Lectures. I, I really do appreciate the, the fact that you are taking a, an historical approach also, an historical perspective to explain how this, uh, this grouping, the ASEAN comes from, what were the first reaction of, uh, of Japan's toward the, the grouping. Uh, it was really, uh, really, really good to, 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 to have this element because most of the time we tend to focus on very uh, recent development and we <clears> lose <throat> this, uh, this uh, deep uh, insight and, and understanding. And thanks also for uh, pointing uh, also very uh, recent development, like uh, what kind of, of, uh, of assistance uh, Japan's uh, provided to, to ASEAN countries for uh, the, the COVID, to, to buy the, the, the COVID and, and, to, and to try to bounce back uh, after, after, after the COVID. Um, 
I, 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 I also uh, very much um, appreciate the, the, the fact that you're pointing out the role of perceptions. I think it's, it's really a, a, key, uh, a key issue uh, in international relations. Uh, of course, what's going on in Ukraine also reminds us uh, about the, the importance of, of perception and, and misperceptions. But um, in, in the case of, of Japan and, uh, and ASEAN, you, I, I see your point that, uh, of course, ASEAN is trying to, to, to balance, uh, to hedge again, uh, against both, uh, both US and China, and not to try to, to choose a, 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 a side. Uh, and of course, Japan is, uh, is uh, uh, is uh, developing his cooperation with with ASEAN also with um, kind of idea in mind because it wants to to check China and so on and of course Japan is a close ally of the of the US but in this case I'm wondering if this uh, kind of of perception gap or uh, expectations gap maybe is really um, uh, an issue. Uh, is really an irritant in the relations between Japan and ASEAN because if you look at the uh, some polls, I think it was last year uh, one uh, one important opinion poll published by um, a think tank in um, in Singapore that showed that uh, mm -hmm. Japan as well as the the, the EU are uh, seen mm -hmm. actually as the most uh, trusted partners trusted, yes. of. Uh, of ASEAN. So it seems that even if there is this kind of gap, uh, well, ASEAN is well aware of it and, and still uh, Japan is perceived as a, as a very uh, trusted uh, partner. Uh, so mm. I, I would like to have your, your reaction on this and maybe want to give the, the floor directly if he wants to, to, to ask uh, his questions to Fabio uh, Figato. Connie is uh, the teaching assistant for this course and is actually uh, working on this PhD, uh, especially on mm -hmm. this kind of edging uh, strategies of, of, uh, of secondary states and uh, especially looking at what, what's going on in Southeast Asia and mm -hmm. in the Mekong region. So Fabio, mm -hmm. if you want to, uh, if you have some, uh, some comments uh, in mind, some questions in mind, if, if you want to, to take the floor to ask them directly to, to me, yeah, you're welcome to do to do that. Oh yes, hello mm. everyone. Yeah, uh, my question would be on the within ASEAN, uh, Japan is especially active in the Mekong region, so the overland part of Southeast Asia through this uh, uh, Japan Mekong uh, Cooperation Initiative that is directly mm -hmm. linked to Japan's FOIP uh, specifically mm -hmm. for uh, the Mekong region. Also, other states are active in the Mekong. I'm thinking mm -hmm. about China with the uh, Mekong Lankan Cooperation Initiative and also the US as a similar initiative, Australia, uh, yeah. South Korea, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So uh, there are many uh, competitive uh, initiatives there. So my uh, question here would be, how is uh, Japan doing in the region, especially in the context of this uh, competition with China and what are uh, the reactions of the Mekong states to this uh, flurry mm. of initiatives taking place in the Mekong region. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, and uh, yeah, and very, very, very important question. So because uh, Mekong region is uh, now the very strategic focal point in the Indo-Pacific now, and then so uh, the the as 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 Fabio said, so uh, various uh, uh, countries, not only Japan and China, but also Australia, US, and South Korea, so engaged in the, uh, the that region. So with their own um, the uh, frameworks. So and then so Japanese government now uh, the pro uh, uh, announced the provision. Was a uh, uh, very uh, very huge economic assistance towards the uh, Mekong regions through the Japan Mekong uh, framework, and then so uh, the ASEAN side or the uh, Mekong countries side, so it is very welcome. So it's very uh, interesting story. So ASEAN country, ASEAN itself, uh, still uh, was still very cautious about the uh, the Japan's intentions in the uh, Japan FOIP 
in the 98, 2018. But at, at that time, only the Mekong region countries well, uh, show the welcoming attitude toward the FOIP. So because for them, the, the, uh, the Japan's uh, the provision to the, um, the um, provision of the aid under the banner of the FOIP is uh, another choice for them to, to balance the China's influence. So, and then, so it's very interesting. So, and for me, the Singapore, and so, uh, the, for example, Singapore criticized the real intention of the for, uh, Japan for it at the time. But on the other hand, the Mekong region's countries welcome the, the FOIP. So it's, it's very interesting. And anyway, so Japan tried to, comp and they tried to provide so aid so to the Mekong region. So of course, so for Mekong region itself, but also for the, uh, the advantage of the, the strategic, strategic competition. So the way the China, but I think, so the amount of the China's assist and China's aid and investment are so huge. And then the only Japan cannot uh, balance them, balance it. And then, so I, like, I want to recommend the Japan and the other countries, if really uh, you want to, uh, the little, little, uh, the, want to um, dilute the China's influence in the region, so please, so combine these various framework into two one, to, to, to one framework, and then so collaborate, uh, no, 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 as uh, uh, negotiate or as a, uh, Changeable, opinion, changeable opinion among the US, Japan, and South Korea, and blah, blah, blah. So, and then, so to provide, uh, to, to provide the, the Mekong region. But uh, honestly speaking, so only Japan uh, the, the can, uh, uh, can't uh, provide enough so assistance to the Southeast Asia and the Mekong region. This is my uh, opinion. Excellent. Thank, thanks a lot, Mie. Fabio, do not hesitate to jump in if you have other comments or, or questions or reaction. Uh, yes. Uh, since we're talking about partnership, how to uh, pull together uh, different forces to achieve an objective, I would like uh, uh, a comment, if possible, on uh, the EU-Japan cooperation over ASEAN. Uh, mm. So uh, Japan and uh, the EU are like-minded partners and they collaborate mm. on a flurry of international issues. But my question mm. would be, uh, what are they doing, if any, uh, for cooperating with ASEAN? And what are the prospects for uh, engaging more uh, mm -hmm. in a common way with ASEAN? So to uh, also to provide an alternative, a more uh, let's say substantial alternative to U.S.-China competition mm -hmm. in the region. Yeah, yeah. and then so as for the U. Uh, no, sorry, uh, no, uh, the EU and Japan cooperation, so uh, collaboration in terms of the uh, the uh, uh, cooperation with ASEAN. So I think so we have to uh, uh, concentrate on the some issue like the uh, green energy and DX, so because, so European country and Japan, uh, they have a, a, a the high level of technology in terms of the clean energy. And then, so it is a, a, a directly related to the universal value and universal uh, interest and the benefit. And then, so uh, the, between the EU and Japan, so we have to focus the specific the field like green energy and DX, so and uh, uh, humanitarian uh, assistance and uh, disaster relief. So such a field, so it's very beneficial for not only for the uh, for us but also to the ASEAN, and and it's very easy for us to um, uh, collaborate. So this is my my opinion. Thank you, Mie. Green Green energy is a very important yeah. topic now. So yeah, so because we cannot use the, uh, the, the gas from the Russia, and then so we have to change our energy policy, not only so for the Europe or Japan, but also all over the world. And then so so we 
we have to enha enhance the green energy and the energy issue. So we the, uh, uh, the by the cooperation with the ASEAN. Of course, I think it's, uh, it's it, it would be very, very, uh, very good and uh, very fruitful indeed because uh, green energy and uh, the greening of the economy is also one of the of the key priorities for the for the EU right now. So uh, obviously, there is a, a lot of convergence with uh, with Japan on this, and I mm. think the two um, parties would be very interested to uh, to cooperate uh, in ASEAN on this. Um, uh, well, as you know, the, the challenges is to, 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 to try to, to set up some uh, schemes to, um, to really cooperate together. That's always yeah, quite yeah, complicated so, to, yes. yeah, to set up joint projects. Yeah, then for, so the, without the ASEAN uh, the, uh, cooperation with ASEAN, so I really want Japan and the EU to cooperate with each other. So in terms of the uh, energy and energy issue. So because, so we are from, and we are facing a very severe uh, situations. So in the energy issue and then so, and so, you know, so Japan sometimes very reluctant to reconstruct its own domestic system. And then, so I want to uh, promote the cooperation and the collaboration with uh, and the EU and to reconstruct uh, Japan's energy mix itself. Okay, I see. So since, thank you. And si since we, we've uh, swim, yeah, shifted to uh, some, some uh, discussion on the energy issue and, uh, and EU, and you mentioned Russia. Uh, so I, I would like to, 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 to raise some, some questions uh, regarding you, you the, the ASEAN's uh, reactions to uh, what's going on right now in Ukraine. You, you, you mentioned a bit. Uh, mm. the, the reactions from uh, reaction from some countries, but um, I think it would be um, also very um, useful if you can highlight uh, maybe in little more mm. details uh, what kind of relation Russia has with yeah. these various ASEAN countries, both in terms of economic cooperation but also defense cooperation. I think we are not uh, always uh, know, knowledgeable about uh, this uh, in mm -hmm. Europe, but uh, still it's, it's very important to know. Yeah. And then so as for the Ukraine issue, so Singapore is a, uh, Singapore shows its very clear position, so pro-Western and uh, join in the sanction, economic sanction towards uh, Russia. So, but uh, uh, the, the rest of the ASEAN country do, uh, do not follow this. But on the other hand, so in the, uh, the, uh, the resolution, so again, uh, um, of the, to, uh, that condemn the Russia in the General Assembly, so the list maybe, so without Vietnam and Laos, all of the eight country, so shows approval. At that time, so it means that for the small and the middle power in the Southeast Asian countries, so respect of the sovereignty and the territorial integrity is a very critical issue. And that, and in this, in, in this point, so they cannot accept the Russians' behaviors toward an additional invasion towards the Ukraine. This is a very basic and uh, and basic. Uh, the agreement among ASEAN countries. But so some ASEAN countries cannot mention the Russia or something. And then so that they, uh, uh, the stance seem to be very ambiguous. So, but on, from my point of view, so the, the respect of the sovereignty and the political integrity and the uh, peaceful settlement of a dispute, they are the core element of the ASEAN way and the ASEAN value and norm. And so from this point of view, none of the ASEAN country cannot follow the Russian side. So Vietnam is very, Vietnam and Laos uh, has a very specific, uh, uh, the, uh, specific uh, the, the circumstances. So because traditionally, so Vietnam has a very deep relationship with Russia the, since the Cold War era. So, and then so uh, Vietnam accepted many uh, equi uh, the, uh, military equipment 
and uh, energy uh, energy technology cooperation or something for that, that, that for the many years mm -hmm. and laos laos is very important so laos so many people said that laos follow the china but it's very uh, oversimplification so laos want to overcome the over reliance on the thai the thai economy so from the beginning and then the china was the another option for them so and then so they tried to tighten the economic uh, cooperation with china through the 2010 it's a very new uh, development but now of course so then all of the Laos elite were very worried about the over dependence of the China China economy and China money. And then for, for and then they tried to enhance the relationship with Russia. So from their point of view, Russia is another option to keep the balance and check the China's influence in this region, in this country. And then so but but Laos is very pity because that this option disappeared now. And then, so Laos are very troubled. So they're very, Laos is very troubled. May, maybe the, their trouble, uh, level of the troubleness is uh, uh, severe than the Vietnam's one. So because Vietnam is uh, more developed, the, the, the Vietnamese economy is uh, developed more than the Laos, so Laos is uh, very worried about the uh, future. So in terms of the economy now. I see, thanks a lot. But uh, would you say overall that Russia's uh, engagement in Southeast Asia grew uh, during the recent years? How do you see the, the Russian engagement uh, with, uh, with ASEAN recently? Oh uh, yeah, so you see more example, more economic cooperation. Do you see more yeah, 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 private yeah, investment? Do you see more offers to uh, to develop the security also uh, cooperation? And without yeah, without Vietnam, so uh, the relationship with Russia is mainly focused on the economy. So for I mean the the for the most of the Asian uh, ASEAN countries, Russia is a business partner economic partner but vietnam is exception so vietnam accept, uh, accepted many uh, the military equipment and uh, defense cooperation traditionally and then so uh, vietnam is exceptional but the other uh, countries uh, the russia is as uh, it used to be the business partner or the uh, beginning of the be, becoming the business partner Hmm, I see. I see. Thanks. Thanks a lot for those uh, precisions. Um, talking about uh, Russia and the Ukraine crisis, um, in in reaction, you've seen that uh, the EU has taken a series of, of measures to to try to support uh, Ukraine, uh, but also try to to build up its own kind of uh, security and and defense. Uh, identity mm -hmm. and uh, maybe develop into a full-fledged uh, geopolitical uh, uh, players. So, so mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a question raised in uh, in, uh, in the chat about uh, mm -hmm. what what is the the reactions and the, the opinion both in in Japan and ASEAN, if you know about. Uh, well, the the question is uh, is mentioning a future EU army. Uh, oh. I, I don't know if 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 we can go as far as this, but maybe a, a reaction about the more um, proactive uh, security, uh, you know, uh, cooperation or defense uh, kind of cooperation by uh, by the EU um, in in the region. Um, do, do you think that Japan and, and ASEAN countries mm. are, are welcoming uh, this kind of move? Um, for example, last year we've seen uh, a lot of uh, naval dispatches from, uh, from mm. Europe uh, all the way to, to South China Sea, uh, mm. you know, from, from Fra France, uh, Germany also, the UK. So mm. it seems that the, the depending on, on the countries in ASEAN, uh, these mm. moves are, are more or less uh, welcome. Some country welcomes them because um, of what's going on in the South China Sea. They think that it's good to internationalize 
uh, the mm -hmm. issue as much as possible. But some other countries mm -hmm. say that, well, you know, it's already a quite crowded region. There are a lot of, uh, of tensions, a lot of boats at sea already. So maybe uh, it's not so relevant that uh, the EU also join. So mm -hmm. wh what is your, uh, your views on that? Yeah, so honestly speaking, so ordinary people in Japan uh, do not know much about uh, the, the EU's development, recent development. But uh, so as for the elites, political elites and the intellectuals in Japan, yeah, so it depends on the person, but uh, the international uh, relations specialist and the security specialist welcome, clearly welcome. The, the the European engagement in the Indo-Pacific, and so Europe's uh, and the the fostering the its the defense cooperation. So it's very clear, I think so. so but of course, so leftist leftist uh, the intellectual to criticize the, the the such a such a movement. So it accelerates the arm race or the strategic competition in the, in the Pacific. But so honestly speaking, there are the minority. So in Japan now. So Japan is, Japan in on, not only the intellectuals, but also the policy makers, but also the ordinary people are very aware of the uh, strategic competition and its uh, dangerousness on the uh, Japan's uh, the independence and the sovereignty. So many people now focus on the threat from China and North Korea. And uh, many people are now very interested in the security issue. So in this and in this situation, so you and uh, EU's engagement and the European countries' engagement in the Pacific uh, uh, perceived as a very positive, uh, positive, not negative. I think so. So it's very interesting. So because I I know the the Japanese of op, uh, Japanese people's opinions uh, situations in the 1980s. So at that time, most of Japanese people follow the pacifism. So the 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 yes absolute absolutism pacifism. I think so. And then, so Japanese people they are, are, were not interested in the security issue. Do not and that, that did not talk about security issue, and only the few people focus on this issue. But uh, uh, this situation changed after the uh, end of the Cold War, and gradually, so uh, the situation changed. So, but it means that so many people have to recognize the strategic circumstances around Japan becoming severe and severe and severe in the 2000s and the 2010s and now. And then so now, so the, the many people, the way of thinking a very strategic. And then so they are very welcome the, the EU, uh, EU, uh, EU, uh, EU's engagement in, the, in this region. Okay. Uh what, what about um, ASEAN uh, countries, various, uh, various perspectives from, from the ASEAN on the EU? And also, I would like to, 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 to add another, another question on, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you mentioned AUKUS uh, <laughs> somehow in, 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 your, in your presentation. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned um, maybe the ambivalence of, of the ASEAN perception of AUKUS. And mm. of course, we've seen very, a um, uh, lot of concerns uh, just after the announcement of, of AUKUS regarding uh, maybe the risk uh, on uh, um, raising more uh, frictions in the region, maybe mm. encouraging nuclear proliferation in the region and so on. But um, a bit later on, we've heard more moderate views or even uh, positive uh, views, as you, as you said. Uh, mm -hmm. that actually, yeah, as they are nice, countries are not really comfortable with this kind of development, but um, it's actually viewed quite positively because it means that uh, the US uh, are still engaged in the region 
uh, they are still uh, deepening their ties with their uh, allies in the region and the UK is also coming uh, in mm. the region. So it's useful as a, as a, as a counterweight to, um, to, to China. Mm, yeah, um, so it's but, very yeah. Uh, also, um, I think one one uh, one scheme that you did not mention is the quad. Um, so quad, I, yeah, I, yeah. I would like I would like to know in light of the the recent development yeah. uh, last year. So we've seen AUKUS at the same time last year. We've seen the transformation of the quad. Uh, actually, it's not. Um, well, it's still focusing on the maritime security, but it's mm. now looking at a kind of non-traditional uh, security. Mm, yeah, issues, yeah, yeah. Looking mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. vaccine mm -hmm. uh, diplomacy, yeah. uh, they set working groups on climate change, uh, clean energy, mm. uh, so critical um, critical technologies, and so on. Working on diversifying the global yeah. value chains. So. The agenda is uh, less, uh, I would say, anti-China kind of feeling that it it had, had on the beginning, and mm. I know that uh, the Asian country were uh, always quite reluctant to to associate with the with the Quad because it has this kind of anti-China flavor. So, mm -hmm. in your views, the the recent evolution, the, the recent development yeah. uh, of the Quad. Um, uh, how is it perceived by ASEAN countries? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that it would make um, the cooperation between the ASEAN countries or association between the ASEAN countries and the Quad more easy? Or do you think it's still, it would be still very complicated for them? Yes, yeah, so the one, my, one, one premise is that, so the transformation of the Quad, as you said, come from the not the pressure from the ASEAN country, but from the, I mean, the, the India factor. So India's we are very reluctant to take side. So it's uh, uh, the India's uh, attitude to China. Of course, it uh, become so severe after the uh, uh, military confrontation. So uh, around the border, so last year, I don't know, two years ago. And, but uh, on the other hand, India's attitude toward China is ambiguous. And not, they say doesn't want to clearly take side. So, but from the US and the Japan point of view, India is a very important partner to check China. So because uh, India is also the uh, uh, emerging power, it's also there is a very interesting and a very severe uh, perception gap between India and the US and Japan, I think so. But anyway, so to keep the India as a member, so the, the US and Japan and Australia have to had to transform the content of the Quad or the content of the cooperation under the Quad. It's, it's led to the transformation of the uh, Quad itself. So, and then, so the second one is that, uh, so the, the, the resilience, so supply chain resilience issue. Is this the pure economic issue? I don't think so. So it's very deeply related to the economic security or the export control or the uh, decoup and it's and, uh, might lead to decoupling. So uh, between the US sphere and the China sphere, especially in the high technology. And, and then, so it means that Quad still contains the very um, um, strategic element. If so, I, I would say very doubtful that the Southeast Asian country follow the Quad. The because they there are uh, the, the economic success of the Southeast Asian countries that depend on the free and open trade and economic order. So, but so uh, the tighten the regulation and export control or something so to uh, to foster the uh, supply chain resilience is contradiction contradicted 
do with the free and open economy in this region. And then, so I think Southeast Asian countries are very cautious about the, such a trend. So pushed now pushed by pushed by the United States. The United States now proposed new Indo-Pacific framework, economic framework. So and one of the core is obviously the uh, the supply chain resilience. It means that the United States tried to tighten the export control and regulation and blah blah blah. So in the in uh, 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 at least in the high technology. So it is the, the, uh, it's the opposite of the, uh, the ASEAN's economic, ASEAN countries' economic interest. And then, so it's very hard for them to support the, such a trend. So, and then, so I think, so even though the transformation of the Quad, so Southeast Asia country easily can't, can't easily follow the, the Quad. Okay, thanks a lot. That was very, very interesting to get your views on on, on this. Um, I, it's also interesting to to your 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 um, your reply on how ASEAN views this kind of economic security mm -hmm. uh, strategies. Maybe not not very positively from 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 their side, but uh, if you look at uh, you know v Vietnam is one of the countries who is benefiting the most. Uh, from uh, the measures uh, to you know tighten economic uh, security and resilience from Japan, uh, US, and others because uh, most of the time a country try to divert their investment from China to Southeast Asian countries and Vietnam is a country of course uh, uh, that is providing uh, very um, very good uh, infrastructure and so on so uh, so 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 the investment are, are divert did there. So um, yeah, Vietnam is, uh, and other ASEAN countries are actually the kind of winners in, the, in, mm. in this kind of, of restructuring of the global value chain. So that's quite mm -hmm. uh, interesting to, 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 to hear that they are not maybe a, a positive views of, of this kind of strategy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> see, many ambivalence for the, for the, yes. for the ASEAN always yes. yeah, trying to balance yes. various interests. <laughs> That's really and many, yes, and gap and many gap and then so over expectation. So I mean, so I, I think the United States and Japan so expect too much the India's role. So from my point of view, so because India is a very independent country, so I don't think the India behave as US and Japan like always. So I think so. Mm -hmm. And then so sometimes so the Quad and uh, so the India's roles are very, I mean, amb ambiguous. So mm -hmm. I see. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, dear Mie, for, for this lecture. Yeah, thank this, you so this much. Morning. You did a great job to, uh, to highlight the uh, historical perspective and also uh, answer to, uh, to our many questions. It was really, very uh, fascinating. We had uh, already uh, positive feedbacks. And um, I'm, I was very, really happy to, uh, to, 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 to host you uh, this morning. I really hope that uh, we will uh, meet uh, in person soon and we will have the, yes. the opportunity to, to host you uh, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, in, in Brussels uh, for, uh, for future like Brussels. events, I hope. Uh, <laughs> in the yes, meantime, I, 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 yeah, I wish you well uh, in, in, in Japan. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I encourage everybody to continue to, to follow us. Uh, we'll have mm -hmm. more events and more uh, um, publications to come soon. So do, mm -hmm. do follow us on, uh, on the Twitter and mm -hmm. uh, YouTube. And this actually uh, lecture will be mm -hmm. uploaded on the YouTube channel of the Japan program VUB. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, check uh, and, uh, and look at it and replay it. Uh, mm. Again, if you if you yes. want. So thanks yes, thank a lot, dear Mie. Uh, have thank a good you. afternoon in Japan, and uh, to yeah. our audience in Europe, have a have a nice day. Yeah, Bye thank bye. you. Thank you very much. So maybe I I have a dinner. So and then so yeah.
So thank you, the Celine, and thank you, the Fabio, and thank you, the all of the audience. Thank you for joining us. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yes. Bye bye. So bye bye.